Well, hello everyone, and welcome to this short tutorial video on how to dual boot Windows 98 and Windows 2000 together. Um, I couldn't really find any good videos on how to do this that make it kind of easy to understand, so I figured I would make one just to kind of show you guys and maybe help some of you out. Uh, you might be asking why would you want to dual boot Windows 98 and 2000? Uh, simple answer is some software either works better in Windows 9X or only works in Windows 9X, and some software only works in NT or works better in NT. So, and uh, it's this way so you don't have to like swap out hard drives constantly or uh, mess around with like complicated configurations and stuff. This way is uh, pretty simple, pretty foolproof, and uh, you don't need any external software to use it, which is great. So I'm doing this in VMware uh, just to make recording easier. Uh, you can do this in on real hardware as well, uh, and it'll be just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the uh, what our virtual machine settings are here. Uh, pretty simple, just got 512 megs of RAM, one CPU, and a 20 gig hard drive. I recommend having at least a 10 gig hard drive for this because if you have anything smaller, space can get kind of cramped because we have to make two partitions for it. So basically, what you want to do is you're just going to want to uh, make sure you put in your Windows 98 CD, which I forgot to do. So once you've put in your Windows 98 CD, you're just going to want to go ahead and turn on your virtual machine or your computer. <laughs> I want to boot from CD-ROM. I want to start computer with CD-ROM support. And sorry if you get a lot of background noise. I am booting off of a real CD uh, because I didn't feel like trying to go download the ISOs for both operating systems again. Because apparently I don't. I lost them. <laughs> so uh, using the real real disk, well, as real as a burned disk is. So you want to go ahead and load up FDisk just by typing fdisk uh, under whichever drive your CD drive's on. As you can see, we have no partitions on here. So you wanna create a DOS partition, create a primary DOS partition. It'll verify drive integrity. And then you're gonna wanna select no. And uh, basically set this to whatever size you want your Windows 98 partition to be. I'm gonna go ahead and set it to be 10 gigabytes. Now we can see we have a 10 gigabyte uh, primary DOS partition. Uh, now what you're going to want to do is you're going to press 2 to set the partition active. So select 1, and that, that'll make the partition active. You need to do that, uh, otherwise it's not going to work. We're going to go back into create DOS partition. We're going to create extended DOS partition, and just let it go the rest of the space here. Uh, this will be the Windows 2000 partition. And it'll say no logical drives defined. Uh, just go ahead and click that, and it'll make it into the D drive. So now we have two partitions, with the second one being the D drive. Now it'll make you restart your computer here, which I will go ahead and do. Once you've booted back up and you got back to the CD ROM boot up screen, you just boot from CD ROM and just start Windows 98 setup from CD ROM. Go ahead and press enter. It'll ask you to format the C drive, which is our Windows 98 partition. Go ahead and let it format. Now it'll also uh, make you format the second partition for Windows 2000. Now this will format it as FAT32, uh, but don't worry, if you don't want Windows 2000 to be on a FAT32 partition, uh, you can set it to be a NTFS uh, later on, which is what I highly recommend because NTFS is a lot better than FAT32. So it'll go ahead and go through scan disk. Both drives have no errors. Go ahead and exit that. And we're in the 98 setup. Now you're pretty much just going to go through the setup, uh, Windows 98 setup like normal. There's really nothing special you have to do. Only thing I would recommend here is just make sure that it says uh, install to c colon slash windows 
and basically pretty much after that you just wait and uh, basically just keep going through the installation it'll reboot a few times keep going through the installation until you uh, land on the desktop so I'll meet you back once we're at the desktop All right, so now we're on the Windows 98 desktop, and you can just go ahead and close the little welcome screen. Now what you're going to want to do is immediately put in your Windows 2000 CD. So go ahead and inject, eject your uh, Windows 98 CD and put in the Windows 2000 one. Okay, so once you insert your CD, you will see this little message box that pops up. Uh, it'll ask you if you want to upgrade to Windows 2000, you're going to click no. And then on the 2000 menu here, you're going to click Install Windows 2000. Now what you want to do is install a new copy of Windows 2000, clean install. Go ahead and click Next. Uh, go ahead and agree to the license agreement. Uh, this is where you're going to enter your product key. So after you've entered your product key, you'll be brought to this uh, special options menu. I'm going to click here in the middle on Advanced Options, and I want to select the box that says, I want to choose the installation partition during setup. And you can pretty much just close out of that and click OK and Next. And it will go ahead and copy some files over, and it will then reboot. And I'll meet you when it reboots. All right, so once it reboots, you will be brought here to this menu, and you can. Uh, now, you're going to want to select Microsoft Windows 2000 Professional Setup. Click Enter on that. You'll be brought to a pretty familiar Windows 2000 Setup screen. Uh, if you've ever installed Windows 2000, it, this is pretty familiar to you. Alright, so go ahead and click Enter. It will load up your partitions. Now, make sure you select the D, your D partition. So I'm going to click that. Now you can leave it as FAT32, although I highly recommend that you format the partition using NTFS. And then go ahead and click F to format. Yeah, I just highly recommend uh, using NTFS over FAT32. Uh, NTFS is just a better file system. Uh, uh, support for larger files and stuff. And now from here on, it's just going to copy the uh, setup files like normal. And pretty much beyond this point, it's just a standard Windows 2000 install. So if I see anything that uh, I need to tell you about, I will. But for now, uh, I should just be going back to the Windows 2000 desktop uh, once installation completes. Okay, one thing I forgot to show uh, earlier was after you, uh, basically, after the first reboot um, of Windows 2000, it will bring up this menu, and you can basically just let the timer run out. It'll automatically be selected on Windows 2000. Um, this is actually on the second restart. I forgot to record this the first time, but the menu looks the same. Uh, I Since I moved the selection around, the timer disappeared, but you can let it time out as well. But uh, if you don't want to wait for the timer to go out, you can just press Enter on uh, Windows 2000. And now we should be... This should boot us to the desktop. Well, actually, it's going to ask for our login information, but you don't have... You can basically just put nothing in if you want. Or, yeah. Eh, yeah. Next. Finish. Now we should be at the desktop, whenever it loads. And there you go, we're at the desktop now, so just go ahead and close out of that. So, if we go into my computer here, you can actually see we got two hard drives. We got our C drive, which is our, still our Windows 98 partition. Um, and you got your Windows 2000 partition, which is your D partition. So now, if you want, to say boot back into Windows 98. Let's go ahead and restart the computer here. You will always see this menu on boot up or restart. 
and basically if you want to boot Windows 2000 you select uh, Microsoft Windows 2000 Professional if you want to boot Windows 98 you select Microsoft Windows and it'll boot right up into Windows 98 There we go. Booted right back into Windows 98. If you look in my computer here, uh, Windows 98 cannot read NTFS partitions, so it will not see your Windows 2000 partition. Uh, but it's not that big of a deal, in my opinion. So, yeah. So the you're done. You're dual booted. You can go ahead and install the drivers for each operating system. You go ahead and uh, install whatever software you want, and you're basically good to go. So, yeah, so I hope this tutorial helped some of you. Uh, might be asking, can you do this with other operating systems, uh, different 9x operating system and different NT operating system? The answer is I haven't tested it. Uh, you could probably use 95 or ME along with 2000 in a dual boot. That, that probably works. As for doing, like, 98 and XP, I'm not sure. I haven't tried that. Uh, although I imagine that the method to do it is probably very similar to this, but you know, if you have, uh, if if you go ahead and try out some other operating systems dual booting in this way, be sure to let me know in the comments. Uh, also, let me know in the comments if this helps you out or if you have any issues. And uh, so, yeah, thank you for watching and uh, have a good day. Bye.